Morning, another day, another real world test. Today, we're doing on the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360, and we'll also talk about the regular Pro as well. Now, if you're not familiar, I'm going through a sort of typical day with this laptop. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the features I like and don't like. We'll go through some of the specs that I think are important, uh, and we'll check in on the battery throughout the day after we do different scenarios to kind of see how it does. But, first things first. You thought I was gonna say coffee check, didn't you? Well, we're starting really late today, so beer check? And this is a bar called Springs and used to come here a decent amount because it's directly across from the old studio, filming studio that I had with Fisher from Mr. Mobile, Jaime from Pocket Now, David Amell from Android Authority who now works for MKBHD, and MJ from Gadget Match. Now it's named The Springs because it's meant to bring the vibe of Palm Springs in California to Greenpoint here in Brooklyn. And they actually have really good cocktails and it's just a fun little like summer spot because of this huge outdoor area. Also, they have a resident food truck that has pretty good food. I actually, I really like the chicken sandwich. I recommend it. But while we're here, let's talk a little bit about the models that this laptop comes in. So first off, we have the Galaxy Book Pro and the Galaxy Book Pro 360. And both of them come in 13 inch and 15 inch sizes. Now for the most part, there's not a lot of differences between those two, the Pro and the Pro 360, other than obviously the form factor. The 360 is a two in one. You can fold its hinge all the way back and use it as like a tablet. Also, it has a touchscreen and the Pro does not. And beyond that, the ports are also different. The 360 has two USB-C ports, whereas the Pro only has one USB-C and one USB-A on the 13 inch. And then we have one USB-C, one USB-A, plus an HDMI port on the 15 inch. All three though have one Thunderbolt 4 port, which is type C. And those USB-C ports are all gen one. So the Thunderbolt 4 port will support Gen 2, which is twice as fast as Gen 1, but the other USB-C ports are all Gen 1. Just so you know, because it's kind of important when you're using like SSDs, for example, that aren't Thunderbolt capable, there's a big difference in speed uh, depending on which port you're going to plug into. In fact, I actually did a video on the best SSDs to use for video editing, for example. So if you're curious about that, you can check out the video below. Now, all of them also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. Now, obviously, I, as somebody who uses a professional camera that has an SD card, would rather an SD card slot for my workflow. But micro SD is still better than no SD at all, and it does allow you to actually upgrade the storage in a way for very little money, because you can go buy a micro SD card and then leave it in there, and that just becomes like an extra one terabyte, two terabytes, whatever it is you put in there. It's obviously not gonna be as fast as the SSD directly inside, but it's a nice little option for some extra storage for cheap. Now, both screen sizes for the Pro 360 are touchscreen, and for the Pro, they are not. And for the Pro 360, it also supports the S Pen, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Now, as far as the difference between the two screen sizes, oddly enough, there's not a lot. So regardless of whether you get the Pro 360 or the Pro, the difference between the 13 and the 15 doesn't do much, other than, of course, the screen is a different size, but it's still the same FHD resolution. And the keyboard on both the 15 inches adds a numpad to the right. And besides that, the Pro 13 also loses its HDMI port, which I mentioned already, and it only comes in an eight gig option, not a 16 gig for RAM. And as far as colors are concerned, the Pro comes in Mystic Silver and Mystic Blue, which is like a bright blue. The Pro 360 comes in Mystic Navy, which is like a darker, it's almost black color, and a Mystic Bronze, which yes, is the same Mystic Bronze as the Note 20 series. And it has a bit of a, like a, almost a pink hue to it, but I kind of like it. I think it stands out, um, and it's definitely like more eye-catching, of course, which I'm all about. Besides that, all the other specs are pretty much the same. Now let's head to one more spot and uh, maybe meet a friend you guys might know. <laughs> Hi guys! <laughs> but first, Hi Zaki! 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 Cheers! 
chin chin. Welcome to the party! Oh, Hi, bud! I'm that there's a man here with a camera, and while you and I can hang, he's got a gun. Yep. Good. Video's done. <laughs> well, that was a happy accident. Met these two guys, who you might know Livia. Yes. And Sean. <laughs> Hi! Hello! <laughs> the friend I was talking about earlier, though. Who I was meaning sir, to meet? Sir, if I was told this you guy. Once, I told you a hundred times, you can't be in here with that. Please, please leave. Like I'm I said, addressing you, so I'm looking at you. Pleasant surprise. No, deeply unpleasant man. Always. <laughs> but anyway, Fisher, Mr. Mobile, if you don't know who he is, him and I both actually have to do our Galaxy Book videos, and we are both going to be up all night because we have both have deadlines to meet. So we figured, might as well, I don't know, work and have a beer at the same time, right? This is Greenpoint Beer and Ale, and it's a brewery that actually opened this new location a couple of weeks right before COVID shut down this entire city for months. Needless to say, thankfully, they survived. And it's honestly just a great little spot that me, Fisher, and Olivia and Jean, obviously, come to once in a while to get away from the busier parts of this hood and just kind of hang out. That is going to be the most popular dog this year. For oh, sure. It is. It is already, I walk it by is and people scream, Dutch dog, and I want to punch everyone in the face. But it's, Can but I, she's I, a I'll doge. Talk. Oh, you're a doge puppy. <laughs> Okay, real quick, let's talk about the screen on this laptop. Okay, so regardless of which size you get, either the 13.3 inch or the 15.6 inch, you're going to have an FHD resolution. Now, honestly, with this laptop, it's not too bad. Uh, so long as you change the scaling to 100% from the 125 that it's set on by default, I find that at 100%, there's enough room for me to do most things that I need to do. And that screen is an AMOLED display, so it is pretty bright and has pretty vibrant colors, but if you're in direct sunlight, I've noticed, you're not gonna be able to see the screen very well. Shade, anything like that, fine, but direct sunlight, it's not quite bright enough. Now, as mentioned, the Galaxy Book Pro does not have a touch screen. The Galaxy Book Pro 360 does. It also has S Pen support, and we do have a new S Pen that is a bit larger than the one you would find in your, like, your Note device. Speaking of that, though, this pen does actually work on your phones that support S Pens, and the S Pens from your phones do work on the laptop, and you don't actually have to set anything up. They just automatically work, which is kind of cool if you already own one of those devices. Now, just like those devices, you can use S Pen Air Command. So if you hover next to the screen, first off, you get the hover ability, but then you can push the button when you do that to get quicker access to things like your notes, uh, screen writing, which is like a screenshot that you can then write on, etc. And the pen itself is responsive. It does a good job, and the two-in-one form factor, the fact that you can fold it all the way back over, makes it a lot more useful because you can actually like draw on it as if it's a piece of paper, which is just better than, say, using the pen on a normal like clamshell laptop, in my opinion. Now, the other thing with that S Pen, every reviewer, including myself, just wishes there was a place to put it, like a silo like we have had on other laptops. It does magnetize to the top of the lid, which is at least somewhere to put it. But of course, if you're sliding that in and out of your laptop, it is going to fall off. And even walking down the street with it, I don't know if I would trust it that much. So yes, I do kind of wish that they at least had a slot to put it. They do, however, include the S Pen when you buy the laptop. So I do appreciate that. Okay, everybody else went ahead to grab us a spot at the next place before their kitchen closes. Let's go get dinner. What did I walk into? <laughs> I said I thought it was a weak French pen when it came to the spot. Oh, shit. I hope you suffer. <laughs> We've heard about this burger for a long time. Fisher, connoisseur of burgers, just took his first bite. Crust on those patties. They've prepared the meats properly. It's warmer than the surrounding environment. <laughs> all these are good points. These are all good. I can handle it with my hand. Listen, it... that's a great burger. <laughs> After that glowing review, I guess I gotta try it now. <laughs> You're right. It's not a good that is a Shake Shack burger, but like upscale. It's a smash burger, which is why it's got that like edges to it that you like. Yeah, it's good. Are you all leaving me? Yeah, well. We're not leaving you willingly. We have things to do. 
<laughs> I have a dog to take out. <laughs> I wish I had that excuse. Huh? Hey, <laughs> wait. What? 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 Okay. Have a good night. Thank you for burger time. I didn't. Thank you for burger you time. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we came in pretty hot to this place from the last place while they had grabbed the table. But this is Three's Brewery. At least it's their Greenpoint location. They're an actual local brewery, and it's right around the corner from Fisher, Me, and Jaime as new studio. Like we had the old one, we've moved down the street a bit, and now it's just the three of us. So we go by this place all the time. I've had plenty of beers here, but now they've partnered with a local like kind of meat place called Meat Hook, and that's the burger that they now have that I've been meaning to try, and so I'm glad that we all got to try it out. It was really nice seeing everyone. Fisher's leaving town tomorrow. Olivia and John, I will see later this week, but they've all left me. So now I'm here by myself, but it gives us a chance to talk more about the laptop. Now first I wanna talk about the keyboard. Now typing on this is a little softer, but I kind of like it. It's really uh, comfortable to type on for a long period of time. So it's good. Now I have the 15 inch model. So mine comes with a numpad on the right. And if you are in spreadsheets all day, you love that. I am not, and so I don't. For me, it just kind of creates a learning curve because I now have to type slightly to the left because I find myself always hitting some of the buttons on that far sign because out of muscle memory, I just think that they are where other keys need to be. The trackpad though is about one and a quarter inches offset to the left. And that actually helps me because it means that I can just kind of move myself a little bit to the left. And now the trackpad is kind of in the center of the normal keyboard. It just makes it easier for me to counteract that numpad muscle memory. The trackpad itself is a glass trackpad, so it's pretty smooth. It's also a large trackpad, which I always appreciate. And something particularly that I like about it is the clicking action. So the mechanics of when you actually click on something, it's like kind of a deeper click. It's just a little more satisfying and I appreciate it. Okay, and now I wanna talk about what's inside the laptop. So we have an 11th gen i5 or i7 Intel CPU along with XE graphics and we have an Evo certification. Now that means that the laptop was sent to Intel and they confirmed that it had a certain amount of battery life and a few other things that I actually did a whole decoder episode on, which I'll leave a link below if you wanna learn more about what Intel XE graphics are and what Evo is. And that is paired with either eight or 16 gigs of LP DDR4X RAM. Now, if you get the Pro 13 inch, that only comes with eight gigs of RAM. Now, I actually was editing a video on this laptop. And as with most computers with XE graphics that I've been testing lately, I'm pleasantly surprised that it can handle my footage at all. I mean, it is 4K 10 bit footage from my Sony A7S III, and most computers struggle on that. And these seem to be able to at least play it back and handle it for the most part in DaVinci Resolve, which is the editing program that I use. If I add color correction um, and footage from phones and just graphics and other things onto it, it does eventually start to struggle. But now I've only ever used XE graphics with 16 gigs of RAM. Now I'm not quite sure if the bottleneck is that 16 gigs of RAM or the XE graphics itself. But regardless, it doesn't matter for the Galaxy Book because the highest RAM configuration you can get is 16 and the only GPU you can get is the XE graphics. So right there, it's probably not a device that I would trust to be my sole editing machine. Now, if you're editing footage that is 1080p or maybe just like lower bit rate 4K, you might be okay. But for me, probably not gonna, you know, throw out my editing machine for this. Now, it is funny for me to even say that because this has integrated graphics and the price is much lower than what I normally go for, which is like an overpowered gaming laptop is usually what I have to use in order to edit my videos. So I just, it is just impressive that you can do that on a lot of these computers nowadays. And I feel like the cost of being a content creator in general from the cameras coming down in price, now the laptops are all kind of coming down in price as far as editing is concerned. So that's, that's just a good thing no matter what. Now, as far as photo editing is concerned, it's been able to handle anything that I've thrown at it. Admittedly, my photo editing workflow is not terribly intense, but I've seen it slow down on other computers. So I'm happy to report that this does just fine. At least the i7 16 gig models, because that's all I've been able to test. Now that does 
bring up something interesting, which is the fact that this does have a Thunderbolt 4 port. And while that's great for super fast storage options, the thing that I think is more clever and interesting about it is the fact that that means you can use an eGPU housing. Now, you can go out and buy any number of these Thunderbolt eGPU housings and buy a desktop GPU, put it inside of it. And if you plug it into this computer or any other ones that support Thunderbolt in this way, you can actually use that desktop GPU as if it was in your own computer. So you're gonna get way more graphic power depending on what GPU you choose. I happen to be using an overkill RTX 3090 from NVIDIA which I don't recommend you do, as there are plenty of less crazy options that are way less expensive, but will still give you a good boost in graphics performance. And I always just kind of like the idea that if you are in a situation where you have an office or your house that you always can come to when you're going to work or even play games, because this will also make gaming a lot better on this computer as well. And then having this eGPU housing and the Thunderbolt connection is like almost, a, I mean, a potentially expensive, but very valuable dock. And then when you unplug, you have your super light ultra portable laptop that you can just, you know, bop around with. It's it just kind of a cool concept. Now let's talk about software because I think it is one of the bigger differentiators potentially that Samsung has over other laptop manufacturers. Now, when it comes to like Macs and iPhones, both are made by Apple. And because of that, without getting too technical, they can integrate with each other a lot better. You can start something on one and sh it shows up on the other and they talk to each other. And also, for example, AirDrop, which allows you to send files through Wi-Fi Direct, but in such a seamless and easy way, people often cite it as one of the reasons why they can't leave Apple's ecosystem. Now, if you own a Samsung phone, well, you can do some of those things at least with your Samsung laptop. They have QuickShare, which works in a very similar way to AirDrop. S-Note syncs up with the S-Note on your phone, and you could see how Samsung could at least start to roll out a lot more of these types of features because Samsung is one of the only laptop manufacturers that also has a lot of their phones in the market. So it'll be interesting to see what they add to that down the road. Now, regardless of whether you have a Samsung phone, though, they did also add some other apps that I thought were useful that just kind of filled in some gaps for Windows, things like their own updating software, a screen recorder, and even allows you to put your face in it and do a few other little things, but it's a simple app that just kind of, you know, fills a gap. And there's a bunch of other apps just like that, that now normally I would be calling these bloatware, but they truly just kind of feel useful and they don't feel super integrated into the system where they're gonna cause me a headache, nor will I even notice them unless I'm actively using them. With one exception, of course, which is McAfee, or however you pronounce that stupid antivirus app. It just yells at me constantly. I hate that app. Really, really do. Okay, it is super late now. I've gotta get to bed. So, I think we're calling it a night. Now, for battery life, here are two scenarios that I was testing during the day and I recorded my battery levels uh, within certain intervals and then we extrapolated out to get approximate battery life for those two scenarios. Now, both of these were at 50% brightness and the recommended power setting in Windows. But there you go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh, about this laptop, about this video, a lot more vlog-like. I hope you don't mind. Let me know about that in the comments below as well. Now, I personally would have preferred to use the 13 inch because I feel like I can get the same amount of power in that just in a smaller form factor. I'd rather have that. But Michael Fisher disagrees with me. He'd rather have the 15 inch. So if you wanna go check out his video that he just did on the Galaxy Book Pro 360, you can click on the link below. I'll also leave a link below to the best price that I could find on this laptop, also the eGPU housing, as well as links to the places that we checked out today, as you guys have asked me to do that in the past. If you like this video though, please thumbs up or share, it's greatly appreciated. Also, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where it subscribes so you get notified when I do new videos. Also, if you wanna see me explore other hoods, check out the rest of the Real World Test series. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.